All right, so let's get started here. Let's get started here. Let me make sure that I am. Recording this meeting. All right, so, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, just chime in, put it on the chat. So this morning, I did exactly what I do every single morning, which is I go to this page over here. I call it Flag Stocks, and I went to the inside day, and I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for, you know, for uh, what I normally look for, which is just charts that have some type of momentum, some type of contraction. Like for example, LIVX, which is on the list today, this is a LiveX live media. Um, what they're looking to do is they like the podcast of live music. Okay. That's exactly what they are. So uh, if anyone wants to, you know, do a concert, LiveX is going to provide that for them. So you can you know, this is a COVID-19 play, right? For the most part. So I'm going through this whole, I'm going through this whole list uh, and I'm looking for patterns. Then I'm going through the down three days in a row, okay? The down three days in a row, this over here, you can, this, in, the inside day could be a momentum, uh, you know, type of scan uh, or it also provides shorting opportunities. And then, the down three days in a row or more where you have 123 names, that's more of a mean reversion scan, okay? It's a structural uh, type of scan. So for example, Novavax is in the inside day and also down three days in a row scan. And if I were to take this trade, when I log it in into my tra trade of view, um, I would tag this as a down three days in a row because it's a structural play. And when your scans are based on market structure, the way the market actually moves, then you can use the same scans, the down three days in a row, the inside day, you can use that on an intraday basis. Like for example, here down multiple candles in a row, here's the up candle through this high, that's where you go long. Here, uh, the same exact end down multiple days in a row is the same exact thing right over here. One, two, three, four candles on the five minute chart. Go to this long, it, it plays out exactly the same thing. And the inside day, uh, it's very simple. Something similar to right here where you have contraction after an up move, sideways action, you get the contraction. So that's what we're looking for. With, you know, typically with the inside day, a stock that has a lot of momentum. Um, what you want to see is a, a move higher. You want to see 10 to 15 days of consolidation. At the very end of that, of, of that consolidation, you want, to, you want to see that inside day uh, on lower volume, and then you want to buy through that high. Very simply. So as I'm going through this list, inside day first, uh, then the down three days in a row, then I'm going to the flag stocks. Flag stocks very simply are throughout the day, uh, I'm going through charts and I might come across something that, uh, that looks okay, but it's not quite ready yet. So I flag it. So that way I don't lose track of it right now. I have 120 names. All right. So for example, let me give a perfect example. FSLY has been on my, on the list for a while. And the reason why in 1122 Abedale capital, uh, you know, bought 3 million shares. And then on 312 this year, they bought another 1.1 million shares. The reason why Abedale capital is, is, is to me is important is because Abedale capital is an institution, uh, that's extremely concentrated. They own like 10 stocks. It's like the, a billion dollar institutions, institution that owns about 10 stocks. All right. So that to me is a little bit more, uh, when you have an institution that big, that's so concentrated, I think it's worth uh, seeing what they own and what they're buying versus someone who has a billion dollars and has 375 stocks. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to this flag and also F FSLY is something that uh, eventually it's going to set up on a weekly time frame, uh, you know, sideways for a while. So I want to keep track of that. 
So as I'm going through this list, is something if, if there's something there, I'm going to jot it down if it's actionable for today. Uh, then I'm going to go to my rolling five day watch list and I'm going to see if any of the names that we had on the list over the last five days, uh, perhaps is actionable now. Okay. And then after that, uh, you know, I might just go and just come here and, and look at all the, all the, you know, the momentum stocks, the top performing stocks, uh, that are hugging the 20 day when they say hugging they are within three percent of the 20 day moving average okay so look i do all these things because i i just i just like to go through charts it doesn't take me that long okay uh but for example when i have someone that says hey can you send me over uh a list you know for you know over the weekend study uh then i would send them the hugging the hugging the 20 day moving average because this is going to give them stocks like this like vivo okay uh that you know, over the last 20 days, what this means very simply, uh, when the stock is within 3% of the 20 day moving average, what it means very simply is that the stock has, hasn't done much over the last 20 days per se. Okay. Um, so you get stocks like Vivo stocks, like, you know, this one G L O P, which looks really good. The only issue that I have with this stock, it's an LP it's a limited partnership. So most firms, most brokerage firms, uh, whether it's interactive brokers or Schwab or most of them do not allow you to buy limited partnerships, especially in IRAs. Uh, if you have a cash account and you have a limited partnership, by the time you have to do your taxes, you have to wait for their, whatever it is, K1, it becomes somewhat of a headache. Um, so then you can go across these. This one's on the list, also down three days in a row. And this is going to give you stocks that are somewhat consolidating or haven't done much in the last 10 days, okay? Something like this. Okay, so after I did all that, I came up with my list. Now I got way too many names in my list today. All right, that could be a positive or negative, but it's just way too many names. And some of the issues that arise when you have so many names uh, is roughly, how do I keep track of these things? Okay, I can't watch so many stocks. Right. Um, I don't know how the way I do, I'm not watching all these stocks. Okay. Very simply, I am going to put, I'm going to take some of these names off the list. I have 29 names. I'm going to take some, some of these names off the list as I go through it again, but let's just go through these 29 names. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, uh, someone gave a great tip where on TC 2000, instead of setting the alerts one by one, all I'm going to do is very simply, I'm going to click here, uh, I'm going to click here, hit the shift button, go all the way down here. I'm going to, going to set an alert on the 29 symbols. And the alert very simply is C, which is today's closing price. So the actual, you know, the actual price right now is above the previous day high. Through high. And... All right, place the 28 alerts. It seems like one symbol is above. So now all the symbols, all the alerts are there already. And the minute something triggers, let's just say, for example, this company, the stock CAL is 694. My buy stop is going to be 10 cents above, right? If it triggers and the order is not in already, how long would it take me to do CAL uh, stock 100 buy stop 704 and then hit the transmit button? That's it. That's simple. Takes, you know, five, six seconds, right? And the order is already in, so I don't have to watch anything. The minute it, it the minute it triggers, it pops up on the screen. I punt. I, I look it up. Okay, CAL. It's already way past nine thirty, so the volume is okay. I'm not going to have an issue. Like sometimes you have an issue at the open where a stock, you know, triggered and maybe it's got a two dollar spread, or maybe it triggered and only has six thousand shares and I can't buy at that very moment. Okay, um, that's it. So let's say for example, if I was a working person, and I already have my list. 
and I already have my list and we don't trade the market. We trade our beliefs about the market. So as of right now, most of you have, you know, certain beliefs out there about the market that maybe I don't have. You might believe that you, you know, the only stocks that go up are the stocks that are trading near 52 week highs. So by the time you get this list, maybe you narrow, you, you narrow down the universe uh, you know, by just looking at the stocks that are 15% within 52 week highs. All right. That's a way to narrow down the universe based on your beliefs. If for some reason you believe that the stock has to make money, they got to earn a certain amount of money, uh, you know, sales and growth, whatever the case may be, then you can narrow down the list that way as well. Okay. Uh, I narrowed down the list. I allow the market to narrow down the list for me by either going through the previous day high or not. Yesterday we had 21 names and I think, I think only four actually were actionable triggers. CAPR, VAPO, Boeing, uh, right at the open just gapped up. So that was done. Uh, CCL, ABT and DRRX. The other 15, I think did not trigger at all. So that's five names in a universe of 4,000 names, right? So you can narrow down the list again, based on your beliefs. Now, you can also narrow down the universe based on the current theme. What's the current theme right now? Work from home stocks and the COVID-19 place. So we can go down this list and say, okay, we got 29 names in the list. UNFI, this is a COVID place. The grocery stores, they're doing a lot better because people are staying at home shopping more, Okay. Uh, BGS, Packaged Defensive Food, you can also say it's a COVID play, that's two. Uh, PGNY, NNVC, COVID play, that's three. Etsy, you know, sort of a COVID play with the mask, they're selling a lot online, that's four. Lake, COVID play, that is five. BMR, BMRA, COVID play, that is six. THMO, COVID play, that is seven. COVID play, COVID play, COVID play. Facebook is a short, uh, COVID play. Okay, so out of those 29 names, you have, I count the 18 names that are COVID play. I left out play, which is somewhat of a COVID play. Uh, if for some reason we open up, play might do well, uh, maybe. Uh, and I left out play and RRGB, right? So now we just narrow down the universe to roughly, I mean, the list to 18 names from 29, right? Maybe that's still a little bit too much. Let's say, for example, you can also narrow down the universe based on the setup. We all know that the reliable pattern that we use, the mean reversion, it's a very reliable pattern uh, in, uh, in almost any market environment, okay? Maybe you've been studying that list really well. You like the way that list works uh, because you've been studying every day the best performing stocks in the last 10 days, and then you realize that 30% of those stocks within that list, the best performing stocks within the last 30 days all share the pattern of down three days in a row and up today at some point. Like for example, we right now we have 886 names that are up $8 or more or 8% or more or $5 or more in the last 10 days. And out of those 886 names, you have 221, which is 25% of those names at some point in the last 10 days had this pattern right over here, which is down three days in a row or more and up today, okay? If you take a look at the best performing stocks in the last month or so, uh, you have 506 names up 25% or more. Uh, and out of those 506 names, you have, whoa, you have 355 names 
70% of those names at one point in the last 21 days had the, met the criteria of down three days in a row or more and up to the previous day high. Right over here, 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 right over here. So that's a lot. That's 70% of the names. This is the reason why this is a structural scan. Right over here, right over here, right over here. They, they, they all don't work out the way they're supposed to work out, uh, which is very simply, you have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Let me see if I can show you a perfect example through here. Uh, <clears throat> You have a pattern of lower highs. All right, so crisp CRSP down one, two, three days in a row, lower highs and lower lows. It finally gets, you know, breaks that pattern by going through the previous day high, uh, you know, 10 cents above this price right over here. And then you go from a pattern of lower highs and lower lows to a pattern of higher highs and higher lows without breaking the previous day low. This is exactly the way this pattern is supposed to work. You have it right here as well where you go from a pattern of lower highs and lower lows, and then it goes up without breaking the previous day low. This is the way it works. And if you see, if you go through this entire list, you will notice that the ones that, the ones that work the way, the best working, the ones that work the best have this. For example, I bought F-E-Y-E -E, right over here, down three days in a, uh, what was it? Yeah, down three days in a row, right over here. And the next day, the stock went through the previous day low and I was stopped out because I raised my stop slowly but surely. And someone said, hey, would you, you know, it went back through that low, would you buy it? Would you buy it back? I have no issues buying back a stock that I just got stopped out of, no issues at all. But when I already know that this one particular skin is supposed to work a certain way and it, and it didn't do it, then it didn't do it. It's like, for example, when you have a breakout and that breakout, that, breakout, uh, that stock goes back to that breakout price, it's a failure. So this over here, this is a failure trade. And since I have so many names on my list, I'm just going to skip it. Okay. I hope that makes sense. But if you want to study what works best, this is what you have to do. And this is the reason why this pattern here down three days in a row, it's a reliable pattern you can use over and over again. And since it's based on structure, you can use it on an intraday basis, on a daily basis, and also on a weekly basis same exact thing okay so so now let's go back so let's say for example now we we can narrow down the list based on COVID plays or we can do something very simply and narrow down the list based on that one particular scan which is down three days in a row let's see what happens if we do that let's see how many names all right so one two Three, four, all right, so that gives us twelve names, okay. And now we, you know, we, we have those 12 names. Uh, and now that's, so we already narrowed down the list a little bit more. And now the market can narrow down the list even further by simply getting us in if it goes to the previous day high plus 10 cents or keeping us out if it doesn't do that. Okay, now... Here's a great question that I got. And, and, and again, and let's say, for example, you are a working person. And you narrow down the list based on down three days in a row. Uh, but you're not around at the open to take the actual trade because you're busy working. 
what do we do? We do this. We go uh, HP. Okay, the buy stop is 1906. So we're gonna do, we're not around, so we have to do a buy stop limit. So we're gonna do stop price is 1906. Limit price, look, if it's gonna go, we wanna be in. Let's not put a limit price two cents above. Let's go 916, 10 cents above, all right? We want to make sure the reason why we're doing we're not doing a stop price is because if we're not we're, if for some reason the stock gaps up to twenty dollars a share before the market opens, you don't want to buy a stock that's already gapping up, you know, a dollar, two dollars, or whatever it is, 10, 15 percent. That's the reason why you put the stop limit price. At the same time, you want to make sure that at 930, when you have these wide spreads, that you're not getting hit by these, you know, crazy wide spreads uh, on no volume whatsoever. So what do you do? Do this. Start time. Start this at 940. Start this at 945. Okay. You press OK. All right. Now this will start at 945 and 55 seconds. So we'll only trigger after 945. And if the stock is already trading above your limit price, you're not going to get hit, All right? So not only is trading about, you know, what you believe in, all right? And when and whatever it is that you believe in, it, it, I think it doesn't even have to be true. If you have the proper risk management, it doesn't even have to be true. But in my opinion, what you should do is you should believe what you believe about the market based on your own studies. You can read something, you can read all you want and then go out here and check it. Is that true? Do I really need to, to buy certain stocks above certain moving averages? If my time frame is 20 days or, or less than 20 days, what works best within my time frame? Okay. And that's how you start seeing some commonalities. And then you start separating what's true and what's not true. That's it. If you have, if your time frame is six months to a year, that's completely different from a person who has a 20 day time frame. Different things matter. But we all have a desired time frame and the actual time frame. You can't say my time frame is six months, but over the last year, you haven't held the stock for longer than 10 days. Okay? That's extremely important. So that's one solution. Number two, or two solutions that you can do. Okay? And we, you, you, that way you can narrow down the list very easily. And again, we don't have, I, don't, I don't have any five-minute charts where I'm looking at intraday, at intraday charts. All right? Because... A five minute, you know, this over here, this five minute rip. Oh my God, it's going bananas. It's, it's, it's going to pull back. If you go into the hourly chart, if you go into the hourly chart, it's nothing at all. Okay, you can't even see that rip. So you want to make sure that you do not. I, I don't, you don't, look, you don't have to. I mean, you can mix, you can mix in them. You can mix them both, but I don't do it. All right, because what usually happens is what usually happens. Uh, normally, when you have a fear of losing money, uh, you go to the intraday charts and and uh, you're looking to get out before it goes down. And those five minute moves mean nothing at all in the daily candle. If for some reason you get into, into a trade and, and it's a loser and you don't want to get out, what do people normally do? They start reading about news about the company, selling themselves about what it is that the company does. And then they'll go to the weekly chart and try to look for support or something positive on the weekly chart. Okay. We have to realize that in trading, you're going to be wrong half the time. It's, it's irrelevant. As long as you have an edge and you're making more money uh, when you're making and when you're losing, you're going to be fine. But you want to make sure that in the bull market, a lot of your sins will be forgiven. You don't take a stop. And then, you know, you might hold on to a stock for th two to three months and they'll come back, whatever the case may be. But you don't want to get into that habit. All right. Here's another solution. Uh, here's another problem. What happens when I have a bunch of names? I already own some stocks, uh, over, you know, from the, from the previous watch list, but they, they're really not moving. Uh, should I sell them? And, and, and buy the new good setups, 
Okay. So we don't know beforehand how these stocks are going to perform. So we know that we have a reliable pattern where the stock's down three days in a row in the morning. And we can see that every single week how it works. And it works well, right? But we don't know which one is going to work out. We don't know the sequence of wins and losses, right? So, and what happens is that we get into a stock, you know, from that pattern down three days in a row more and it works out really well. And we think that the next one will work out the same. Or if we have three losers, ah, I'm not going to take this one because this one's going to be a loser. Every trade is random and unique. So you need to know that you need to go through the trades. And when you start trading, uh, you want to make sure that you predefine your risk. You're risking the same amount, nothing outrageous that's going to destroy your account or you're going to have you know, tremendous volatile moves in the account. Because when you have tremendous volatile moves in the account and your account is going up huge and down huge, eventually, psychologically, that's going to uh, you know, give you some paralysis down the road. It'll catch up to you at some point. So you want to make sure that you have enough size where it's moving the account, but not so big where you are, you can't sleep at night. All right. So here's what happens. So let's say, for example, that you're all, your money's all tied up, then it's all tied up. Then you just have to wait or, and, or I want to sell most of my inventory in days three to five. Why? Because in the short term, within my time frame, how do stocks move? One, two, three, you know, four, five, and then sideways sit down. One, two, three, four, then sideways sit down. And you can go through any stock here, LIVX, now multiple days in a row, one, two, three, then sideways. Okay. Now, the res you know, what's going to happen after the sideways action, no one really knows. It can go higher or lower, but we have this burst here. And this is what we want to take advantage of. This little burst right over here from this side to right over here gave you 60%, 56%. You're not going to make the 56%, but, it, but the stock made such a significant move that it gave you an opportunity to make a decent amount. Now, this little burst here gave you 56%. Uh, over here, CODX, again, uh, you know, again, same thing, inside day, one, two, three, four, and then five, right? So, so here's what I mean. So that little stock gave us 56%. This little burst right over here only gave you 18%, 19%. Uh, if we go back to... Uh, March, when the market was in the meltdown, maybe that little burst is not going to give you as much. And that's the reason why I believe targets are made up. You can use whatever targets you want. You can make up whatever targets you want. Okay. And you can make your risk reward ratio as sexy as you want. I can go out there and say PSTI, you know, my stop loss is right over here at 831, which is roughly. 20 cents and my target is over here $13 a share and I can say woo that is a 50 to 1 risk reward trade this target is made up the stock doesn't have to go to $13 a share right so my target is going to be it's going to be based on that burst so back to the question what do you do here's what you do you go through your list what are you holding on to Oh, this is the first day of the move. I want to give this another two or three days. Right over here, this is one day one, two, and three. Okay, this is going to be in the chopping block. It's been three days already, hasn't made a move. Not only has it been three days, but normally when I get involved with a stock, let's say, for example, here at 314, uh, if it, and I own 1,000 shares, let's say. If the stock goes up 10% that, that first day, I'm only going to sell 100 shares at plus 10%. I'm going to sell 250 shares plus 15%. I'm going to sell 500 shares plus 20%, right? If it's pretty much in the first day. But if this stock already, like MEIP, if I'm already in the stock for one, two, three days in a row, 
and it's only giving me 10%, then I can't sell only 100 shares on day three. I have to get a little bit more aggressive because the stock is already running out of time within that three to five day burst, okay? So here's what you do. You have too many names on the list. You don't have any room. Then you leave it as it is. You're going to you know, let these things work out or you go through your list and start writing down which stock is on day three, four, or five. And that, that's what goes in the chopping block. All right, because what we want to do as daily swing traders is we want to get involved on the first day of a multi-day move. Day one, and then you have a multi-day move. All right, we don't want to get involved in a stock that's already up four or five days in a row because chances are that we're going to sit through some type of, you know, sideways to down consolidation move. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to get involved in day one and start selling days three, four, and five at, at the latest. Sometimes you're gonna get a 20% move in that very first day and you can sell all of it, that's fine, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. So that's something that you can do. Go through what your, what your holdings are and start writing down X, Y, Z. This is day three, uh, A, B, C, day two, uh, G, H, K, that's day five. I want to start selling that one. I want to get involved with a, with a, with a day one stock, okay? So let's see what else we have here. Any questions? Let's see what else we have here. Any questions? Right, and I, and I think that... Uh, I, look, I think uh, one of the biggest issues that we have, I don't know if you guys were listening to the Mark Douglas video right beforehand, is that we can all find ourselves in the winning trade. Winning is not the issue. Being consistent is the issue. And in, in order for you to be consistent, we have to work on our mental skills, right? The most important thing in trading, uh, the most important thing in trading is pretty much you. And that's the reason why every now and then, I'm asking, how's your mental game? Okay, how's your mental game? Whatever information the market gives us, the down ticks and the up ticks, that's neutral information. The market doesn't know who we are, doesn't know that we bought it or sold it. It's just neutral information. But as long as we continue to be happy when things go up and, 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 and depressive when things go down, you're gonna have a tough time. All I'm thinking about is the next 1,000 trades. And this is like anything else, sports, play basketball. Think about the next play. Think about the next shot. You can't change the past. So trading, you're going to be right. You're going to be wrong half the time. Usually people fall into two categories. You have the guys who have the high win ratios, right? You got a 65% win, uh, win ratio. Uh, you could be a one-to-one -one trader, Okay. You got a 60% win ratio. You can, you know, make a hundred for every 100 that you, uh, that you lose and you're going to be profitable. You're going to need a lot of trades, but you're going to be profitable. Okay. If you, for some reason, you're able to catch, you know, big winners, uh, then like four to one, then you can be profitable 30% of the times. Uh, if you can catch these type of winners, huge winners, you could be profitable 20% of the times. But I think the issue is that most people, their expectations are a little bit off. They want to be here at the 60% win ratio, 70% win ratio, 75, and have this type of, these type of numbers. And that's not, it's just not possible. There's a story out there from Bill Eckert. I think it was Bill Eckert, one of those turtle guys, that the guy was wrong 95% of the time, Okay. He's probing, 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 probing. But then once he got involved in a winner that never looked back, then it was off to the races. And some people trade that way. If you guys read the journal a month ago, that won uh, a couple of black swan funds that were up 4,000% in a matter of one month. They were down every single day, whatever. They were down for two years in a row. We didn't have a black swan event. That guy who bought the, uh, the VIX, the 50 cent, uh, the 50 cent VIX trader, Every single week buying the 50 cents of VIX options, 
wrong, 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 95% of the times, then finally gets that big payoff. That's possible as well. But the problem is that most people don't, you know, can, you know, they, they just don't have the mental fortitude to be wrong 80% of the times. Okay. Um, so we fall into these two categories. Like for example, my win ratio is 50%. All right. Sometimes in, 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 in any given week, it might be 80%. If I want, if I was concerned about my win ratio, I can just take, you know, uh one to 2% gain on every single trade and I'll be at 75% at a minimum. And the reason why is because my entries, I think one of my strong points in my trading is my entries. I think most of the stocks that I own immediately move up. So if I were to reduce my, you know, what I'm looking for gains, instead of say, hey, I'm going to sell some at 10%, I'm going to sell some at 2%, that win ratio is going to be up huge. But now I got to make 5,000 trades in a year to really make a difference. So I want to fall at 50% and somewhere around here, I want to be anywhere between 50 and 60 and somewhere around here and then do whatever, a thousand to 2000 trades if possible throughout the year. Okay. Um, any other questions? Any questions? I'll give you another little hint as well for trading. If you are trading and, uh, and you're actually watching, right? Here's another little hint. So Ray, this thing was up 20% yesterday, all right? Um, and we all missed it. And it was an inside day scan. And it was, look, it was a pretty good looking inside day, right? Because you had uh, a very, you know, an inside day on 6.9 million shares, which is pretty much almost half of what it normally trades. So you got the price contraction, and you had the volume contraction. We all missed it. I missed it for whatever reason. Maybe I was going through the list too fast. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe I was going. Maybe I was going through the list too fast, and I missed it. So what can you do? What I do is I have this intra ID. That means intraday ID. So I took all the inside days. There are three hundred and eighty names here. I took all these names. Copy all symbols to intra ID. So now when I go to my main page throughout the day, uh, I'm going to hit scan. And then this is only going to give me all the inside days from yesterday that are through the previous day high. C is over H1. The price right now is above the previous day high. So that way, for some reason, if I missed it, I can look at this intraday and maybe uh, I'll catch it then, okay? That's the same thing I do with stocks down three days in a row where I am, I put all the names I have that one scan and all I do is, oh, here it is, what am I doing? I put that one filter through the previous day high, and then this is going to give me all the stocks that are down three days in a row, row or more and through the previous day high. So that way, if, it's, if we have 500 names, I don't wanna go through 500 names. I don't wanna put 500 alerts, okay? I can just do this, and as they come up, I can go through this every 15 minutes, and then just decide there. These are just all solutions that you can come that 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 you can do. Any questions? You have to ask, do in the private chat, whatever you want, but I think the best way. Uh, you, know, you want to get something out of it. And what we're looking to do here, what I'm looking to do is very simply, I just don't want to give you stock picks. I'm giving you the scans. I'm telling you how to study the charts. So that way you can fish on your own. We, you want to be able 
to do this on your own. I can just give you the stock, you know, the stock picks every day. That's what most people want, right? I don't know. Uh, the problem with that is if you want, you know, longevity and you want to be around for a while, you have to make them your own. I can sit through a consolidation where nothing is working for me. I can go through a losing streak of, of 10 uh, uh, straight trades. And you're not going to see me out there looking to, to change the way I do things or look for some new scans because that's all part of the game. Ups and downs. But if you're just following someone else, what you're going to do is you're going to base your decisions going forward based on what happened in the last trade. And this happens across the board. Okay. Every single time from major institutions and major consultants who are being paid, you know, big time money to find hedge fund managers, the first thing they do is look at the recent performance. And if you had a great year, I mean, this is everyone, people. I mean, the, even the, the credit analysts of hedge fund people, if you talk to them, the, you know, they'll say, all they talk about is the recent performance. Oh, why would I want to invest with a guy who's down 20%? Right, but if the guy's up 30% in the last year, I want in, not realizing that they believe that whatever happened in the last year will be replicated immediately after. And it's not the case. But this is something that's been going on forever. And what usually happens is that over here, sideways action, people lose faith. Over here, get me back in. Here, once they finally get back in, because they saw this rip higher, right when you get in, you get this pullback. And you're like, oh my God, what just happened? Get me out. And over here, I want to get back in. Okay. So in other words, this is the reason why you have to make it your own. So that way you can go through the streaks, through the losing streaks and understand that that's just the way the game is played. That's just what happens throughout your trading cycle. And that's for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. You can be Renaissance Capital. You can be whoever, Paul Tudor Jones, whoever it is. Okay. The bigger the rip higher, the bigger the consolidation, you're going to go through sideways to down. That's also an in individual names. All right. If you look at some of the biggest winners recently, if you look at, let's look at Microsoft, one of the biggest winners back in the nineties. Look at this move here. The bigger the move, the bigger the sideways action. It took 15 years of sideways action. And that's for, that's for every single stock. That is for every single manager uh, across the board. You, 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 the, the amount of emails that I get, hey, I'm interested in your managed assets. Can you send me your recent performance, right? And sometimes, you know, here you go, because you're going to get excited because there's a rip high, you're going to get excited. And sometimes I just play around with them and say, listen, there's nothing there that's going to tell you what's going to happen in the future. So when you go back and you, I just had a conversation with someone who's a senior vice president uh, of a head, uh, of, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a mid-tier investment banking firm, and we were talking about one particular hedge fund who was backed by Stanley Druckenmiller, still is backed by Stanley Druckenmiller. And there was a Bloomberg article. Uh, and, and the response was, why would I look at him? He's down 18% since 2018. And I'm saying to myself, I said, that's exactly when you want to be involved. You want to be involved in the quiet periods before the guy actually turns things around and, 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 and it rips higher. That's what you wanna do. You don't wanna wait until here and then say, let me get involved. No, you wanna start looking over here because this will never, ever, ever change. All right, so make the scans your own, understand the process. And those of you who are getting started, here's my recommendation. Start with only one scan. Stay super focused with only one single setup. Block everything out. Forget the intraday charts. Start 
with one single setup. Commissions are now free. Okay. You can start buying two shares of every single trade and just follow the process. I'm going to go and buy it through this buy stop. This is my initial sell stop. And this is the way I'm going to sell it. And just do that for the next 100 trades. So that way you can get into the habit of trading in the carefree state of mind. Because if you buy a thousand shares of XYZ stock, uh, your emotions are going to be a little bit different if you only bought two shares. You want to get into that carefree state of mind. And then slowly but surely, you want to start increasing and increasing. Those of you who play sports, uh, you know, specifically, you know, probably basketball, when you're in the zone, right, you're, you're pretty much blanked out. And you're just shooting the ball and the ball just, you're not thinking about missing. You're just thinking about shooting the ball. You're pretty much in a carefree state of mind. And that's what we want to accomplish in trading. Hey, Frank, during a market correction or during a market correct correction such during the one in March, will you, hold on a second. During the market correction, uh, will you continue to take your scan trades or do you also monitor the market direction as part of the process and correction? Okay. During the correction, right? And we can argue. We can argue that we are still in the correction based on the intermediate time frame and based on the fact that we're still underneath the 200 day moving average. We can argue that, right? During the correction, uh, uh, for example, back in March, those of you who have been in the room for a little bit longer than just the last couple of days back in March, uh, all the live meetings, you can go back and watch them. I was starting with the 30 minute look. The 30 minute look across all the indices. Okay. And anytime that we were underneath the five day moving average, like we are right now on the spy, you got to start being a little bit more careful. This is only when the market is in the correction. In the bull market, uh, in my opinion, the daily bars of the S&P 500 to me are meaningless. Trying to you know, come to some type of conclusion based on one daily bar in the S&P, to me that, it just, that it, it just doesn't work. The rolling five day watch list gives you more information. I, I, I had no idea for the most part that the market was down, whatever it was down yesterday, because again, I'm focusing just on the daily watch list. And sometimes you're better off doing that. Because believe me when I tell you, if you focus on the market and, 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 and what just recently happened in the market, you wouldn't be taking longs here. You're thinking, oh, we're gonna go down the hill. This is crazy, this is not true. But look, they just, the individual stocks continue to work. So I think the, the faster you can detach yourself from looking at the market every day and just focusing on the setups and the rolling five day watch list, the better off you're going to be as an individual swing trader. There's no doubt that during this type of correction, right? It makes sense to focus a little bit more on the spy. And the reason why when you have this type of correction, everything is correlating, everything is moving in tandem, okay? During these big corrections. But right over here, when the market has gone sideways for the last, call it month, uh, you still had, you still have, we still had a lot of individual names that are still going higher. And this is your opportunity right over here within the sideways correction where individual names are working underneath to really outperform the S&P 500. And believe me, guys, I am taking these trades on a consistent basis while at the same time, hedging my SPY, IWM, and QQQ holdings. I own the SPY, the Qs, and the IWM as core holdings, okay? And the only thing that changes is the allocation to those holdings. So on the way down, the allocation to my SPY, Q, and IWM holdings will increase. Then once we get the rip higher, it's going to decrease. So right over here on this day, 422, when was it 422? 
I sold some of this, I think right over here at 292, 296, the QQQs, uh, 222 when Facebook reported, whenever that was here in the after hours. Okay, and then slowly but surely, I am hedging because in my opinion, as of right now, I believe that we're going to be in, in a big sideways market, big range. And I believe that this right over here is the top of the range. And whatever I sold at 296, 294, I believe as of now that I might have an opportunity to buy it down here between 270 and 260. Okay, so you have different market environments, right? In the March market environment, uh, the focus was what was working then was all the beaten up names. And the scan that we were using, the main scan that we were using was we were going to all the stocks and we were looking at the worst performing stocks Uh, you know, on a six month basis, we were starting from the worst to the top, right? And then that's when we caught stocks like APC. Was it, uh, is it APC? APC, Apache, what's Apache? APA. This is where we caught stocks like Apache right here, 324 long, right over here. We were buying all the beaten up names, LADR right over here, right over here. So that, that's a different market environment, different scan, uh, different set of rules for the most part, okay? Um, so I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Let me just touch on one other thing. At the open, uh, I've been using some trailing stops. All right, so that way I can just focus on the new the, the new things. And I use the trailing stops. And the way a trailing stop works is what I try to do is, um, let's say, for example, SDC, it comes from a down three days in a row scan. Okay, so the initial stop on this type of setup is the lowest low of all the red bars, or of all the previous red bars during this little condition right over here. So the initial stop was 631. Okay, when I bought the stock through here going through this high, the stock gave me the opportunity to raise the stock to 680. All right, so what we want to do is we want to make sure, or, we, or what we're hoping for, I hate, to, I hate to use the word hope, but what we're looking to do is what we want to bear the most amount of risk on that very first day. And if the stock moves up in our direction immediately, which it did here, we want to be able to raise the stop without choking the trade. So right over here, my stop went from 631 to 680. That's that's a that's a you know that's a that's a big difference. That's going to make a tremendous difference after a series of trades uh in your in your RR and your win ratio and all those things. Right? You want to reduce that risk slowly but surely without choking the trade. So at the open yesterday, um I put the sell stop, I put the trailing stop. And if the stock was trading at 725, I took 725 minus my stop, which was 680, and I put a 45 cent trailing stop. Okay. Which means that uh, my it was at 680. So the stock can go down to seven, you know, 710, seven, whatever, but at 680 was a trailing stop. But then as the stock starts to move higher, if it goes to 750 that trailer is going to move automatically. And sometimes what happens is this. You get that spike. Here, the first, you know, nine, this, this was nine, 940. You get that huge spike from seven to 740. And then that trailer chases the price up and then you get this, quick retracement and this is where i got caught and got stopped out because i wasn't fast enough to change the trailer 
And that's what I do throughout the day. If the stock goes, for example, to 770 and my stop is at 680, then I'm going to take 770 minus 90 cents and put that trailer into a 90 cent trailer. Okay. Uh, but sometimes you get caught. And if you get caught and you believe that for some reason it's a shakeout, which by the way, we don't know what a shakeout is until after the fact. All right. What, what's a shakeout? Shakeout, people call it shakeout, uh, where you buy something, you get stopped down, and it goes higher. So it's only, it's only a shakeout based on the outcome. What do you call when it continues to go down? So if you believe it's a shakeout, don't be afraid to buy it back. Some of the, be some of the best trades you're going to have are stopouts. Right? And if it was just a stopout based on the mistake, buy it back. Right over here. 521, long 749, stopped out was a mistake. This is not like before, guys. Before you had to call a broker, you you know, the commissions at a minimum was was 100 bucks, $150. Zero commission now. And the stocks don't know who you are. Okay? All right. Hope uh hope you learned something. Hopefully uh you got something out of it and I'll see you guys in the room.